Sup YouTube, Active Asylum Royds here with a post-2016 presidential election analysis for progressives. That's Active Asylum on Royds, kryptonite for conservatives. I'm off my Royds, off my rocker, and on the warpath, here we go. As you can tell, I've put on a little weight in the past past year or so, ever since I broke my foot. It's like... It's like it just keeps going to my midsection. I, I just can't seem to get back into running again. It's like my foot still gives me problems at times. And well, well shitty Alabama healthcare, and it's about to get a lot shittier. Uh, of course, I have. I'm one of the few people in the, around here who really has a good insurance plan through his workplace uh, that isn't going to be affected by whether Obamacare gets repealed or not by the GOP. But still, yeah. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I just, I don't know, I just, thinking about the 22 million Americans that are going to lose their health insurance over this, this, this presidential election blew all kinds of chunks. I mean, along with, with uh, Donald Trump basically getting into the White House and carrying the old Bush cabal back in there with him, a mix of neocons and Reagan re re revolution wackos, uh, and a few of uh, Wall Street's best. I love that shit. Um, we we also saw Colorado's attempt at trying to found its own universal health care system, its own single payer system, go down in flames. And a lot of the reason why the congressional seats and the Demo and the Senate seats and, and so many local level offices went went Republican during this election was because everybody was so focused on what Trump was doing and what Hillary w was doing and they were so focused on this that nobody really paid attention to the fact that the Koch brothers were funding the living shit out of congressional races all over the country. The Koch brothers and their allies were funding the living shit out of every Republican that was running down ticket. We took our eyes off the ball we didn't think about the fact that these assholes, just because they don't, just because these assholes weren't funding uh, uh, Donald Trump, didn't mean they weren't doing anything. It doesn't mean they were sitting on their asses this time. Okay. All right. That's that was just a side note I wanted to get to. Okay, I got a little list here, a short little list, uh, a few items I wanted to talk about. Hillary supporters. Good job, guys. Really good job. We warned you. I don't want to gloat, but considering that we're going to be living with the damage of your decision for the next 30 years, I told you so just doesn't cut it. So I hope you enjoy losing everything because, hey, in your attempt to get someone who was more electable, you're going to wind up losing everything, and we're all going to have to pay for your pride for your arrogance and just and just your selling out your principles while blaming the victims basically blaming us the guys who had our vote marginalized because of your complicity with Debbie Washman Schultz and her cronies at the DNC trying to put their finger on the scale for Hillary Rodham Clinton someone who because the republicans are 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 going to have control of both chambers of congress, uh, congress and the presidency and the supreme court because Donald Trump's going to be able to get at least two or three Supreme Court appointees, making it where everything we ever fought for, going all the way back to the 19, late 1940s, is going to be under assault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Consider the 20th century completely erased. Everything erased. This is the new Chile under Pinochet. That's right. Donald Trump is the new Pinochet slash Francisco Franco, and the rest of us are going to be under it. And the thing is, I'm not even saying, this is not, if you're a Trump supporter you're watching this video, click off it, because this is not me uh, basically basically getting salty tears, because, hey, uh, I'm not one of those guys who's going to go, uh, I'm, I'm not one of those guys who's trying to talk to you assholes, all right? I'm not. Years ago... I figured out that there's no way you can really talk to right-wingers. You can't talk to conservatives. You can't talk to libertarians. You can't talk to any of these sons of bitches. So it's it's a it's wasted energy because you can't fix people who essentially only want private 
private uh, privatized charity as opposed to a a comprehensive social program set that would fight poverty who want a, a private system just because they want something they can abuse for tax write-offs all the while giving them some kind of uh, of a of a of a hiding place from which to say they're moral just because they consider private charities uh, applicable for this for for society's greater ills you can't talk to people who are willfully evil or who are so greedy that they just don't give a shit and you can't talk to people who are xenophobic you can't talk to people who are nationalistic you can't type you can't talk to people who are sectarian in nature you can't talk to those kinds of people but understand that when I talk to that that when I do talk to Trump supporters I'm not talking to the group that we're going to vote Republican regardless of what of who it was on the ballot <sighs> I'll be talking about two specific subgroups of Trump supporters that really do deserve a lot of the blame for what we have to go through now. Anyway, going back to Hillary supporters. One moment. <coughs> Spitting a southern white dude's pastime. Gotta love it. Anyway, um, going back to Hillary supporters, I hope you're all happy because now we are all royally fucked. All those Hispanic friends out there that you have, guess what? Guess what, Mr. Mi Mr. and Mrs. Middle and, uh, and wealthy cla class white woman who probably lives in the suburbs, who probably has never really seen one bit of actual discrimination in her life. But just had to have Hillary on the ballot because you needed you needed something to from from your own group that is wealthy upper class. You, you get the message, right? You get you get the, the the gist of it. And no, I'm not I'm not talking about feminists in general. I'm just talking about a very a very small subsect of sorry a very small but very vocal subsect of of, of feminists who who didn't really give a shit about the the facts on the ground. You got what you wanted. You got what you wanted, and now, and now we we're all gonna have to suffer through it. It's gonna be a long winter, and there's gonna be a lot of bitter medicine we're gonna have to swallow going into the into the next election cycle. A lot of a lot of bitter medicine that I know a lot of you, including myself, don't want it, don't want to take. But you know what? We're not gonna be in a position to argue. Yes, we can probably dig our heels in like the Republicans did, but when we changed the filibuster rules when we had the majority, that essentially set it up where Republicans can roughshod over us no matter what we do. So, uh, <laughs> oh well. Again, <sighs> y'all got what y'all wanted. Y'all wanted to make history a second time in a row instead of thinking about uh, the issues that were going to motivate people to vote Democratic in a way that would allow us to have down ticket uh, coattails, but you know, whatever, wherever floats your boat. I mean, you're all going to have to live with this with with your mistake for the rest of your lives. <clears throat> Acid reflux, just the same as everyone else, but at least with you, you might actually learn something from this. Oh wait, that's right. We tried every way we could to get you to understand that you were that you were applying a double standard very similar to the ones that Republicans applied when they went after the uh, out group during the primaries, but you wouldn't listen. Do I want to build bridges with you again? Of course I do. But I want you all to be honest with yourselves and just and just come to terms with the fact that no we're not sexist. Bernie Sanders supporters aren't sexist. Uh, they're not racist or anything. That, that you got to understand that many of us have fought for women's issues, have fought for for civil rights issues for 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 years. So you can't you can't make that claim with a straight face. 
We had our reasons for not getting behind Hillary, and it didn't have anything to do with what she had packing, what she was packing between her, between her thighs. Okay, that had nothing to do with it. It's just that we, we were taking into account the fact that the Republicans have been gearing up to go after Hillary Clinton specifically for close to thirty years now, but with Bernie Sanders, it was like something out of left field, and they wouldn't really know how to deal with someone like that. And now we come, we come out and we, f and we find studies showing that Bernie Sanders would have beaten Trump handily. You brought this on us. You, s you spat on us and then you basically r went and ruined everyone's future, including your own. So, there's that. Uh, I mean, as long as you learn your lesson from this and just, and just, just get out of the way, man. Get out of the fucking way and, and just let, help us, help us rebuild the Democratic Party from the inside if that's a viable option. All right. Next thing I want to talk about on, on the, uh, on this list of uh, items is the DNC chairmanship. Now, there are three candidates three promise, uh, promising candidates that each have their own strengths and weaknesses um, who are who are who are in the running for the DNC chairmanship the first one the gadfly who is somewhat pro establishment nominally nominally pro establishment but you know he's the, he's one of the guys that uh, got snuffed out early on in the Democratic presidential primaries. Uh, Martin O'Malley, former North Carolina governor, Martin O'Malley. A, a, I guess the guy wants to build a name for himself because he put, him, he put his name out there early on in the Democratic primaries and uh, someday he might want to run for president again. Of course, I think that this is not the way to do it because we need someone in there that's going to rebuild the party, not someone who's just doing it to have another item on his fucking resume. So, I'm sorry, Martin, but the truth is, you had no popularity whatsoever. You weren't able to garner any support. You can't be a tongue-in-cheek liberal in this day and age and be considered a populist to get some kind of groundswell behind you. I know you tried to position yourself between Hillary and Bernie Sanders, but there really wasn't any third option in that whole thing. I mean, we all knew that Jeb that uh, Jim Webb wasn't going to go anywhere because that's Ronald Reagan's former state secretary. That was a blue dog. He wasn't going anywhere in that kind of race. Their coalition is dead. But Martin O'Malley, he he's not someone that I don't know. He could probably build his profile somewhere else, doing maybe running for another higher office in North Carolina as a, uh, for for U.S. Senate. But I really don't think that guy is. Is uh, is DNC chairman material? Uh, the second candidate on the list is an old favorite of mine, but at the same time, he's someone who went back to the establishment after after they treated him like dog shit. Uh, Howard Dean, former Vermont governor Howard Dean, is uh, trying to get his old job back as the DNC chair. I really love what he did with the party the last time. He gave a lot of outsiders a good foot in the door. He, he's got experience as a as a DNC chairman, and he was really good at it. He gets a lot of flack from the uh, from the corporate guys for and the uh, the fundraising uh, DLC crowd for not uh, raising enough money. But then again, I guess that was part of the problem is that everybody thought that raising money was all that really mattered. And that's been the problem with the uh, third way DLC types for years, and Howard Dean broke the mold. So he's got the 50 state strategy, which was which was instrumental in taking back the U.S. Uh, Senate, and the Congress, and the majority of the governorships, and the majority of the state legislatures back in our last successful midterms elections of 06. I remember those. I got in on the ground floor. That's back when the liberal net roots rose up, and man, back then things were rocking. We did well. We handed the Republicans their asses during a midterm election, and we had higher voter turnout than typical than was typical during a midterm election. On top of it, so let me drink real quick.
so the DNC chairman, former chairman, and former governor of Vermont, Howard Dean, would be a pretty good, I'd say a great pick. But then again, I don't want to. We got another really good pick on this list that I th that I think we need to consider as well. Because understand, Howard Dean did sell out after he was through with the uh, working at the DNC, or as the insiders in Washington say, he got his head right just because he he started accepting money from the pharmaceutical companies, just like Hillary Clinton did. You know, he sold out on, and I don't know. I think that would. The fact that he got in good with those people again after all the shit they gave him throughout, throughout uh, the Bush years, all the way up into the 2004 presidential election. Understand, understand this. Howard Dean doesn't really have much love for these people, even though he's in bed with them. He does not have a lot of love for them because they screwed him out of the presidency by getting behind John Kerry. They coordinated attacks from the DNC against him. He was basically the Bernie Sanders of 2004. He got his ass handed to him uh, by the DNC because they there was a lot of backdoor manipulations, a lot of a lot of crap done by Bob Schrum. and most of the moderate to center uh, center to center right uh, crowd of the Democratic Party. They settled for John Kerry because they wanted someone who was pro-establishment and someone who wasn't going to run on the right issues. And the right issue at the time to run on that was populist was the, the, the war in Iraq. That I, I have to say, I like the way Howard Dean. I like the way Howard Dean does does it, did his job the last time because it not only netted us the House and the Senate and the governorships and the state houses. But it also rebuilt the Democratic Party, state parties, and and funded them, staffed them. You know, just he he did things that we really needed within the Democratic Party. Only problem was he was just as focused on getting certain uh, centrist Democrats elected as he was getting progressives. He didn't really care if you were a centrist or a progressive as long as he funded your ass and got you elected. And therein lies the, the, my major issue with him. Um, and I can't help but think that ever since he sold out to the pharmaceutical industry and started taking money from them since his last tenure, because remember, this is the guy who actually got the who got Obama into the White House, and Obama stabbed him in the back by basically firing his ass and putting someone else in the, in the chairmanship. You know, Debbie Washman Schultz uh, later later on. So I'm just. You know, paved the way for Debbie Washman Schultz to to rig rig everything in favor of Hillary Clinton. So again, in bed with him, but at the same time, probably not too keen on being their friend. You know, probably has a lot of reasons. You know, he probably has a lot of resentment for what they did to him. But again, this is the same guy who also did everything he could in two thousand and four to keep Ralph Nader off the ballot in many states. So he's not he's not friendly to alternative candidates in any shape, form, or fashion. So that's, in my opinion, that's a strike against him. So again, he's got a lot of good points, but he's he's developed a few bad ones too. And I, I don't know. It's just again, I've been a fan of Howard Dean's for years, but it's it's really hard. It's been really hard these last few years to look at him as someone who could be reliable in that position. Uh, the next candidate would be Keith Ellison. Keith Ellison, a uh, Democratic congressman, uh, was endorsed by Bernie Sanders, enough said. That is the one really good thing he has going for him, and I personally hope that lightning strikes twice, and and when, if, we, if we nominate this guy, well, if we get behind his, his bid to become DNC chairman, that it will lead to most of the benefits we would get with Howard Dean anyway without any of the drawbacks. Keep my fingers crossed this because this is the guy that broke with the DNC the rest of the DNC and supported Bernie Sanders, you know. He's got to have some kind of character. All right. The next item that I want to talk about on my list, yeah. Um I ain't got much more. 
uh, accusations made towards people who did not vote for Hillary Clinton who were on the left. That shit needs to quit. Hillary supporters need to stop that shit. Democratic Party insiders are showing their asses again about this shit. I mean, uh, Jill Stein did not get enough votes to, to, to rob Hillary of the election, all right? She did not give, get enough votes to create a spoiler effect in any of the states, whether it was Pennsylvania or Michigan or any of the or Florida or any of the battleground states that that uh, that Hillary really needed to win. So, you know, that crowd really can't say that that Jill Stein was the cause of it. Hey, I voted for Jill Stein because I knew I had nothing left to lose. I mean, Hillary wasn't going to carry Alabama, was she? No. Howard Dean carried this place by a landslide, and and Jill Stein only got maybe zero point three percent of the vote here. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, no, I made a principled vote because I knew I could afford to get a, to to do it, and I lost a friend over it anyway. I lost a friend I've had on social media for years because I I came back and I admitted that I voted for Jill Stein. But you know what? I also voted for Jesse for for Jesse Smith, the 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 man who endorsed Bernie Sanders during the primaries who was running for Congress in my district. Yeah, that's right. I had a reason to show up even if I wasn't voting for the uh, for anyone for president. I had someone to that I could get behind who was principled enough and far-sighted enough and good, a good enough progressive. Yes, he still lost like he did the last time he ran, but you know what? He's principled. He's principled, okay? I'm, I'm getting behind that guy 100%. So, whatever. And to people who... People just... I don't know. It's just... All these accusations made toward the so-called Bernie bro crowd, it was just... The Democratic Party set itself up to fail. You don't bash two-fifths of your base and, and have good things come out of it. You just don't. But at the same time, Hillary supporters back in 2008 were even more likely to vote for John McCain according to their to their own poll responses than Bernie supporters were for Trump. Yes, there were some Bernie supporters who were who were dumb enough to vote for Trump just because they wanted an anti-establishment guy, a seemingly anti-establishment uh, candidate, regardless of who it was. And uh, <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. But no, sorry, but having David Brock. Uses uh, uses little one million dollar PAC to attack social media uh, uh, sites for Bernie Sanders, uh, trying to shut down Bernie Sanders groups on Facebooks and every, uh, Facebook and uh, on other social media sites. That, that, mm -mm, nope, nope. That right there may may have cost the Democratic Party the millennial vote going into two thousand and eighteen. Assuming, of course, brand new Congress can't help resurrect it. Uh, the the grassroots of the left and get them, uh, get independent liberals and and millennials energized again and get and actually the DNC going into 2018, they had better learn their lesson. Don't meddle with the grassroots. Don't meddle with anything. Get out of the way. Just let us do what we've got to do to win. They can help us. But if they get in the way to hinder us because of some ulterior motive, like like re like uh, reducing voter registration drives, or the, you know the number of registration drives, or uh, reducing the number of polling places on election day through de state Democratic parties, I, I just you know state uh, Democratic uh, run states, you know just trying that to to reduce the chances that uh, that insiders that uh, establishment friendly candidates will, will, will win reduce the chance that they'll, that, the, that they'll lose <sighs> if they get in the way again if they repeat the same mistakes twice because we already don't trust any of those assholes if they are dumb enough to do the same thing twice 
especially knowing that we're, we're going to be looking out for those kinds of shenanigans from there on out. All I have to say is, I hope they're ready to be a political minority for years. But then again, this goes back to what Sink Wager was saying on uh, Young Turks. The, 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 the financial overlords of this country fund weak Democrats who will do everything they can to kill progressivism within the Democratic Party, and then once they secure their own election, roll over for Republicans and let Republicans have what they want. They deliberately fund these kinds of Democrats because they know that they will give them everything that they want. Now, I, I always wondered what these uh, these weak pro-establishment pro Democrats were thinking, are, are, th are thinking when they sign on to this, because they need to realize that at some point they're going to outlive their usefulness and their political careers are going to be over. And what, are they going to go and work at the bank? Are they going to go and work as a lobbyist after that? All I have to say is uh, they better watch their asses this time because we're wise unto them. All right, last item on my list. Go going back to those two subgroups of Trump supporters that that I mentioned earlier. They're out of the two. I think one uh, one group of Trump supporters really need to get really deserves some some shit thrown on them. Seriously, just the group. We're, we're, every one of us knows someone who just voted for Trump because they wanted to troll people. Let's face it; those kinds of people exist. They went out, they voted for Trump, thinking, oh, if I can get Trump to win, I can get people really pissed off. Well, guess what? You got everything you wanted and then some, but you know what? Like most of us, like many of us, you're going to wind up suffering too. Oh, yeah. If you voted for Trump, if you're part of this group that voted for Trump only because you were trying to troll non-Trump uh, uh, non supporters, you know, uh, you were trying to troll Democratic supporters, Democratic presidential candidate supporters, even though you're not a Republican yourself. If you're part of this group, this particularly nasty group of people, give it six months, and if not six months, a year, and you'll understand why you don't play with other people's lives like that. You'll get your jollies off, you'll you'll sit back with your popcorn and eat it, <laughs> yeah, and you get all these people having liberal salt on, on the internet, <laughs> look at all these people get uh, throwing, uh, get rioting in the streets and shit. <laughs> uh -huh. You know who you are, and all of us are going to have to live with this for the rest of our lives because of people like you in part because of people like you and these again these uh, these kinds of people don't I, I don't I really can't understand what goes through the minds of these kinds of just mentally deficient just just pathological dumbasses. I mean, I'm a troll. Don't get me wrong. I troll. I troll a lot, but I never, I never stoop so low as to just use my vote to troll people. That's that's not me. All right. There, there's there, there's a fine line between just getting a few short, you know, quick jollies in, and then there's. Oh, taking it so far that everyone winds up having to pay for it. But we got to live with the, with with the damage they've done. Now this next group, you know, that I hit on just now when uh, I was talking about how accusations were being made by Hillary supporters against uh, against uh, other groups. Um, Former Bernie Sanders supporters who thought they were they were they were uh, sticking it to the man by voting for Donald Trump. Yeah, 
the very man that Bernie Sanders himself said was a pathological liar during the primaries. If you are a former Bernie Sanders supporter and you voted for Donald Trump, you got played like a heart from hell. You are the biggest village idiot outside of maybe George W. Bush. And even he was smart enough not to vote for Donald fucking Trump. So whether you're whether you're even on his level is debatable. Yeah. Congratulations. You're possibly dumber than George W. Bush. Okay, um, just stop breathing, please. Stop breathing, stop breathing, stop eating. Just leave. Just go die somewhere. Because you fell for fake populism, dudes. <laughs> because this guy brought the entire Bush administration clown car back into office with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rudy Giuliani for Secretary of Defense. Newt Gingrich for Secretary of State. Oh, and let's not forget that one Pickerwood from, from uh, Goldman Sachs, who will now be the Secretary of Treasury. The, sorry, the Treasury Secretary. You know, just... Thanks, guys. Thanks. If you wanted to get back at the financial institutions and crony capitalism, you sure found a really fucking swell way to do it, didn't you? Didn't you? I mean, believe it or not, toward the end, even I thought that maybe a Donald Trump presidency wouldn't be as bad as as all that. But you know what? Donald Trump, he lives to defy expectations from what I've, I've come to come to realize. And... So now we have someone who's probably 75 IQ points below a creationist sitting in the White House, who is a petulant child, who used violent rhetoric, violent, xenophobic, and racially charged to get elected to the United States presidency. And the people that he that he stirred up, they're not going away. Under Obama, what happened? Out of hatred, out of, out of hate for our first black president? Hate groups like the Ku Klux Klan, Stormfront, they grew by just like 700% in terms of, of membership. Believe me. What Donald Trump was giving a focal point for, those people have been emboldened. They're not going away. And we're going to have to live with a resurgence of this kind of crap in America in the 21st century of all times. We're going to have to live with all of this. We're going to have to live with, with Paul Ryan getting rid of, of, of Medicare, uh, trying to privatize Medicare. We're going to have to live with all of this. We're going to have to live with Obamacare being being repealed. We're going to have to live with, with the fact that there are a lot of people who are going to die from this crap, from all this crap. People are fearing for their lives for good reason. I bashed Hillary during the primaries for good reason. I criticized the fuck out of her for good reason. I criticized her supporters for good reason. We didn't need this kind of a situation in this particular election. This one presidential election was the presidential election that we needed to keep the Supreme Court. And what happened? Godwin's Law came into play. I think that's what it is. Uh, I think that's what the, the name of this one is. Uh, no, it's not Godwin's Law, is it? I don't know. I, again, I'll, I'll look it up later. What can happen will happen. 
we are fucked. Let that sink in for a minute. We're fucked. We're going to have to fight back for the next 30 years. All the while, we're going to have billionaires being able to pour unlimited amounts of money into their candidates at the state, local, and federal level. We desperately needed uh, people in charge who are going to at least, who are going to at least try to enforce glass de Gaulle. Just, just we needed some kind of buffer between us and them. And the DNC dropped just. They didn't just fail us, they screwed us. And certain people were complicit in that. Certain voters were complicit in that. And they used the politics of fear to manipulate all of us. I guess the one, well, I guess two silver linings that can come out of this entire thing, out of this entire uh, election cycle is that one, Ted Cruz will likely never become president. Thank goodness. And two, Hillary Clinton is finished permanently. She'll never be able to, to run for anything herself. Well, and, and you could probably add a third one, but this one remains to be seen. The DLC third way corporatist group that have lost, that, that were responsible for, responsible for us losing in 94, 2002, 2010, 2014, and finally in 2016, they have been so discredited because it's one thing to lose a midterm election. It's another thing to lose a presidential election. All the while talking about how you're trying to find candidates that are that that are, that, that have a winnability thing going for them. Yeah, good job, guys. You've done you assholes at third way. You assholes. Uh, within the New Democrats Coalition, as they like to call themselves, you have done us. You have done what we progressives could never do ourselves. You have sh you have put the final nail, supposedly, in the coffin of your own faction within the Democratic Party. You have been discredited. You have been weighed and found wanting. And now we all ask you, just get the fuck out of the way and let us run this party and get this country back in order. You can write checks to anyone you want, but I can't I cannot promise you that we will take your money because knowing where it's where that money came from. We don't really want you anywhere near the Democratic Party's apparatus of power. We don't want you anywhere near the decision making table. We don't want you anywhere near state party chairmanships. And we sure as hell don't want you anywhere near any foundations that are any that are remotely close to to pro being a progressive advocacy group. Because we just don't want you tainting us. We don't want you muddying the water. We don't want your triangulations. We don't want any of your bullshit. You had your chance. Five chances, in fact. And all you have done for years is conspire against e against easily winnable candidates on behalf of paper tigers. And it has cost millions of Americans more than you can imagine. If you are part of this crowd and you're seeing this video, just do us all a favor and just get the hell out of politics and let us run this country the way. Just let us try to get the, uh, to, to build, uh, uh, to just rebuild the party. Let us try to, to do anything because you know what? Jill Stein may not have gotten 5% in this election, thus making it where she couldn't have the Greens as a, as a viable uh, major party th or third option. But... They're always going to be there, waiting, waiting to to be built up by progressives who, who just get tired of the Democratic Party altogether. And if you Democrats don't learn your lesson, 
Well, if you lose enough elections, eventually those corporate donations are going to dry up because you're going to outlive your usefulness. What's the point of funding you if they can just fund a Republican who could beat you? I'm Active Asshole on Roids. Peace. Fuck out.